Hello, Hello everyone. everyone. Welcome, Welcome to, to the third inaugural Lauren yeah, Draw and Law stream. Thanks, Thanks to everyone, everyone who could join us. So, so yes, uh, as always, I am Kid Fox or Matt Cleaver. Cleaver. I've got, got a bunch of comics and a bunch of stories and a bunch of stuff, and I'm here to draw people's suggestions and answer people's questions for a couple of hours and see how that goes. Yeah, sorry again for being away last week. We were up in Bishino, which is kind of like our way to just relax. It's a way to get a place to get away to. It's just a really nice um, area of some of the east coast of Tasmania that's got really amazing beaches and just really chill atmosphere, and it's just really cool to get up there for a week. Because we're pretty lucky in that we live right next to a beach, but, but, and, and the, the beach, beach is pretty good, good but, but sometimes, sometimes you need an even more better beach, beach than that. that. So that's where we were for a bit. So, so I was away for that and couldn't, couldn't stream last week. week. But, but I had a really good time. Got, got some really cool sunnies from up there. Because they do like my big sunglasses that can go over my regular glasses. All right. So yeah. Glad we've got some people coming in already. That's our audio has doubled. What have we done? An echo, is it? I might have to get... Technical support. Oh, yes. She's already on it, looks like. Thank you. I have a text spot. What seems to be the... I'll stand back and let you do some magic. I think the webcam mic must be on. I'm going to ask the conundrum, I don't know whether to talk and avoid the dead air or to talk and have a bunch of echo at the same time. It's in trotty mode. Yeah, we are just... Yeah, that's what it is. Good, Good job. job. Thank, Thank you. you. I would. Oh, wait, wait. looks like there's still two. two. I've got to disable. Ah. Is that better? Now we'll wait for 10 minutes until chat catches up so we know. Thanks, Angel. Yeah, we've got a few technical difficulties to sort out here because we've just got a big fancy new computer. We noticed a different location we set up in one of the rooms of my house that has all the toys and stuff in it, which is every room. But this one even more so. So if you have a look around, that's a bit of a nicer backdrop than before. And I might pan this around at some point just to get a better view of some of the other stuff. Got all my miniatures, got all my, got all my figures, all my solar to Gherkin, big mecha robots, I can't really see that in there. Got some Transformers up here. Got some big O Gundam, Digimon, Mazinga Z, Ninja Robots, Gurren Lagans, Star Wars, Star Wars stuff, got a huge Star Wars fan. Macross, of course. And in the back, some ancient posters. Just to remind myself of the time when I was a bachelor with no self-respect and we just stick stuff on the walls everywhere. So, yeah, no picture again. Well, wait a second. Okay. Just, what's going on? Oh, what's up, Angel? It's still echoey. Still echoey. I'm gonna take off the headset so you yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, just type the cam. Sorry, everyone. We're just gonna switch over to the webcam mic, which is rubbish but better than double. So the moment you got rubbish and also double.
Oh, now you can hear my clicking. Now can you tap cam again? Oh, no. Is it OBS? Someone practice it? Yeah, uh, it could be because we've got two in there. Can you just type cam again? I'm looking in OBS. Oh, fine. Okay. Oh, Take off the headset, turn it off. <laughs> and just talk for a bit for me. Alright. Yeah, so it'll um is that is that sounding like a thing? It's gonna sound like underwater in an empty warehouse probably, but is that sounding like a thing? It's echoey but it's not normal. It's still echoey? Yeah, it's because it's the webcam. Oh yeah, of course, right. Yes. I had thought the you know, about the third one we'd sort of have things sorted out a bit, but that's okay. We reset it okay, I'm 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 re resetting this one. This is the first inaugural one. First we didn't exist, it can only be getting better from here. So yeah, we've gone to the webcam mic until we kind of sort out everything else that's going on, but that's just what we're gonna have to deal with. Just pretend it's the year 2000 and that's the best audio quality we've got. All right, so yes, uh, what have we, seven minutes in? It's a two hour stream. If you go by percentage, that's not too bad. How are we going? Sounds like a tin can full of awesome. That's fine by me. I'll take it. Can I get your food? So BLB, mm, I'll allow it. Uh, can you start off? Well, I was gonna start off with the one that I had from just the messages on Patreon. I'll just do one of those real quick. Uh, for Mimi, who wasn't he able to join us. So yeah, that one was, oh yeah. It's a good thing this incredible picture's on the screen because that's gonna probably be the one that's on the screen for the longest for the stream. So let's get rid of this. One thing I did remember to do was to map all the buttons to the, uh, the tablet on the new setup. So all right, the one that was requested there over on Patreon was what if, bit of a bit of a Marvel what if, the original plan of what was going to happen in the first thing that shadow came to be where Amethyst and Brianna were going to get the uh, neural flare and Brianna sort of have it done so that we could bring find a way to bring the humans back. So what would happen with that? So I reckon, so Brianna, that's been a little while since I've drawn her. Actually, I saw a picture of a number um, the other day and I forgot how much I've deviated from the standard the original drawing I had of, of, had of her, which, yeah, sort of the concept art, which actually resembled somewhat what a numbat looks like, and she ended up not being very much like that at all. But they have quite long sort of noses, so I'm just going to go back to that a bit because the neural flare will kind of change you a little bit. And yeah, so for anyone who somehow, for some reason, is here without kind of knowing what that comic is in our shadow, just a comic set 50,000 years in the future where animals have taken the, the role of humans or the, the niche that we have in on the earth because humans got wiped out for a reason that becomes apparent sort of at some point during the comic. And animals, uh, once they sort of vanished, uh, the animals that could do it, so ones with opposable, not opposable thumbs, but the ability to hold stuff with their hands, kind of filled the niche in of everything we left behind and slowly evolved in our ruins and stuff like that. Um, so what the neural flare is, is a machine that was slight spoilers, I guess, had something to do with the downfall of humanity. But what it does is it's kind of like the internet that gets downloaded directly into your brain. When kids are babies, when humans were babies, they would just have this done which would sort of fill up their whole brain with knowledge, sort of the sum of all human knowledge. And as they sort of grow and evolve, that knowledge is slowly lost depending on what their brain decides to keep based on what they end up doing in their life. So if they are um, using certain knowledge, that'll stay. If they're not using other knowledge, it'll go. 
And that was kind of the ultimate achievement of humanity because it meant that everyone started off with the sum of all knowledge and kind of kept what they wanted and were able to expand um, their, their stuff from there. Those, those things kind of still existed because during the last years of, of human existence, humans were trying to save whatever they could because they knew that things were kind of going downhill. And uh, to save whatever they could, they started to make things out of diamond and gold so that that would last the test of time. And some of them did. So uh, Amethyst is a rat who had a big crush. A, it was had a big fan of ancient human stuff and wanted to bring them back. So uh, the plan was to find a new flare and use the knowledge that it would give you to find a new way or some extra sort of knowledge that would allow humans to be brought back. Because if anyone could do it, then they would have figured it out at the time, but maybe not had the, the faculties at the time to act on it. But that didn't end up happening. So what the neural flare does for an animal is a little different, depending on like the quality of the neural flare and what the animal is. But the same thing will happen. But um, in the comics up until now, it's pretty much just been adult animals who have used them. And because animal brains are different, a lot of safety features that were in play for the neural flare so that a baby wasn't able to use all the knowledge that they got straight away, those don't work on animal brains. So they immediately get the sum of human knowledge or whatever their brains can sort of fit in. And that also comes with the ability to interact and control, interact with and control all human technology that might be around. And by, de by, de by proxy, anything that was also created using human technology. So if we had been flared, I guess the, the stuff that you keep is one, the a memory of your most important person or a, most important people, depending on how it's set up. And the, yeah, generally the parents, in case of a baby, it would be for the parents. But in the case of an adult, it would just be the person that they, they like the most. And sort of along with that goes kind of knowledge of what that person was all about, what their deal was. So if Brianna is a neural flare, I probably should have thought about this beforehand, but I didn't. So the other thing it does is it sort of reconfigures your body into the best sort of version of itself or what you would consider to be your, your best self. That was just something to have a baby sort of be in the best of health and also, yeah, mitigate any, any problems. And it was just something, you know, parents kind of just wanted, wanted the best for their kids. So... Given that, Brianna, uh, Brianna would probably remember Amethyst and what she wanted. So by default, the race of numbats, kind of like a nomadic race who didn't really care much about technology or possessions, so probably wouldn't actually build many uh, mechs or anything like that. Part of the question was, oh, that the stuff that they build would probably look different from a lot of you know, human or rat technology. It would, uh, given their own devices, that's probably not what they would prioritize. A flared numbat would probably kind of hone in on the sort of knowledge or the sort of stuff that they care about. So that would be just maintaining, you know, the status quo or not, not, not causing too much of a fuss and not using too many resources, that sort of thing. So given sort of knowledge like that, they'd probably just, just try to make the world better. They probably wouldn't make any machines or anything like that. The... They probably just, yeah, fix, fix the atmosphere, fix the land. Australia is kind of arid, especially 50,000 years in the future. Probably just do some terraforming and stuff like that. But because she would remember Amethyst and all of what Amethyst wanted, she'd probably want to bring the humans back as part of what Amethyst wanted. And also Amethyst is a huge tech head. She's like a, a gravitational expert. So... The, yeah, what would she be doing? Yeah, on the spot thoughts. So for one thing, yeah, let's have, let's have Amethyst in the background going like, oh, what have we done? What have I done? Whoop. Red is. So. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll give a, a number at Mecha go just because, you know, you need those to do whatever's. No matter what you're doing, you need a giant robot that makes everything easier. So I'm going to this back here. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm starting to go with a bit of a bigger brush, because especially now that I'm in this new, even gigantic uh, monitor than before, it's kind of thrown me all off. I thought I was getting a bit, a bit okay with sort of the digital inking and stuff, but we're back to square one. So quality's still terrible, but we'll see how we go. So, do, 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 do. nope, what sort of hand is that? Not much better, but the right hands tend to be kind of pointy at the end, just as a shorthand for little claws. All right, so we're gonna be doing some stuff here. And clothes-wise, the numbats were kind of, oh, I guess, I guess that's the one thing that sort of stays the same. They tend to sort of use the human, like, template and blueprint for their, what their technology and stuff looks like. But it tends to be a lot more kind of form-fitting because that's more futuristic looking. Yeah, they can kind of do the same thing with a, just like a flat bodysuit rather than big bulky armor. Yeah. Now with that, let's zoom out a little bit and we'll see in the background some of the stuff that we've got kind of getting made. So yeah, I feel like we've got some... I might add a bit of blue in here just to show that that's actually happened. But yeah, I feel like you'd be pretty, pretty serene, pretty kind of okay with everything. The numbats kind of generally just go with the flow. Except for Brianna, who's a little bit different. She'll just do whatever, just to, just to make some change, just to feel alive. So yeah, I suppose, yeah, I'm gonna do a number of mech up here. Let's see. I feel like the, the human aesthetic is still present a little bit. So it's gonna have this. Oh yeah, this is one of those things that, yeah, in, in real life, yeah, straight line, not a problem. I can do them all day long, but digitally, hmm, not so much. I really, I, I think before next time, I meant to do it this time, but kind of right at a time. I probably might get some like little smoothing kind of stuff going on. No, we're gonna make it look more high tech than that. Yeah, again, it would probably be mostly that kind of energy stuff. So, I'm gonna have this sort of coming around like that. And I reckon like a no mouth, but something like that. Yeah, I reckon maybe just the front of the ear and the rest is that kind of hard light stuff that most things are made of. That's kind of my, my again, my shorthand for stuff that's really high tech. The more it's made of light, the more high tech it is. Just like in real life. Kind of like that. Yeah, all of this bit is gonna be just some energy. And I reckon we'll keep that sort of the number sort of shape. Yeah. And even that's a bit, bit low tech. Let's get rid of any sort of corners and stuff. Everything's gonna be smooth. Might do that thing that I was saying I was gonna do with like the reboot of, uh, of um, Stolen Generation where everything is kind of like some parts are solid but other parts are kind of just a that sort of Australian representation sort of um indigenous kind of art stuff I reckon we might get a bit of that sort of going sort of like oh it looks a bit more as techy than anything else yeah we'll sort it out must be a little little design challenge Get some stuff going here. And yeah, I reckon it is like mostly, mostly light, but a lot of it kind of, sort of some plates, but fairly minimal. Yeah, I reckon it'd be, it would probably not really designed for kind of, looks like an armored dealer at the moment. Not really designed for, for war, it'd be more kind of a, a thing to be... I'm just going to have it being built, I think. So kind of the, all the stuff coming together, sort of build it up. 
And yeah, maybe it's like sort of a representation of the spine up here. Because at this point, the only thing Piranha would have seen would be the rat stuff that they brought along with them. They hadn't discovered any human ruins yet. So they reckon just be drawing on, on stuff. Because just like the, a lot of the things, you know, humans were doing in their last days was sort of planting stuff around the place to allow the next group of people or the next group of whatever that came along to evolve a bit faster. So they'd sort of fast track their evolution, kind of give them stuff, mainly warfare stuff, but things to, to, to work with. And a lot of the, the races did find this and they did use them. So like the kangaroos do have things like uh, boomerangs and, and things that they would have found from ancient human stuff either left behind on purpose or not. So I feel like Brianna would know a lot about you know, the old sort of cave paintings and as, as a number I would be more in tune with their way of life rather than the more kind of Western stuff. So she'd probably be drawing on a lot of that kind of knowledge, I reckon. So yeah, that can all be sort of building up. Then we've got some stuff. And it's sort of, depending on the species, it does tap into a sort of more primal thing that they've got going on. So yeah, it's gonna be sort of slightly more animalistic. But yeah, the arms haven't quite sort of been put together yet. And yeah, we're building this up. I reckon she's probably building this up out of the remnants of maybe something that Amethyst brought along with us. So let's put a rat strider down here. Got about five trillion of these, especially in the last couple of pages. I guess spoilers if you're not on Patreon, but um, yeah, there's a lot of these things. A lot of them very densely packed in a lot of frames. So I have got a little bit of practice recently. Although whenever I go back and kind of check, just to double check how I was drawing things, back in the day, I do find that they do vary a lot from panel to panel in terms of what they look like or what their exact detail is like, but that's okay. As a whole, I don't think people really mind. I'm really going to nitpick that. So yeah, I'm like, man, the earlier designs of the starters, they're a lot more skeletal and imposing, but that was kind of the point. It was sort of like partially metaphorical when I was doing the comic, especially in the early pages of In Our Shadow, the striders become less and less of a threat. Like at the start when, you know, Brianna and Bray are trying to escape from it, like one strider is this incredible, unfathomable machine built by a race that they couldn't even begin to comprehend like the power level of, or how these things even work. So they're represented as a very sort of scary, more organic kind of thing. But as the story goes along and they sort of uncover more stuff and they get, more used to the technology, dealing with it themselves, and as technology started to escalate, the striders, they became a bit more, um, yeah, a bit less organic and a bit more just normal. And so they'd be around and they would barely be even a threat anymore. And that, that sort of, I wanted to kind of do that again with this, the current one, part two, where the escalation happens again. Like it starts off with the, you know, a, a power suit built by the raccoons or squirrels is like the epitome of technology. And as soon as a strider comes in, it's like, oh my God, this outclasses everything we've got. And then shortly after that, that gets outclassed again by something else. And then that gets outclassed again. So there's just this big, big progression of, of stuff kind of going on. But yeah, I reckon if Brianna, it also enhances yeah, let's sort of thicken these lines up a bit and kind of make a bit more. Yeah, it should probably get a bit a bit taller because that tends to be something that happens when you get flared. And just again, as another little aside, seed and marble at the moment, or you know, up and when they when they were like teenagers, their heights were quite different. But that might equalize again, sort of spoilers. But I mean, it was obvious that something was going to happen. But yeah, their heights might equalize because of the flare. But yeah, so we've got this. Just 
probably a bit too much. Because granted, Numbat's pretty small. They kind of look bigger. I guess if you're you know, not from around here, it's hard to gauge how big any Australian animal is. Generally, a rule of thumb is it's like twice as big as whatever you think it is, especially spiders, especially kangaroos. But Numbat's opposite. So I guess it all comes out in the wash if you take out animals as a whole. Numbats kind of look like they could be the size of anything, like a cat. But they're really small. They're more like a bit bigger than a mouse, I think. But they've just got so much detail on them, they look a bit more. So again, I think we're going to bring these hair, these whatever, these bits of hair, these Knuckles-esque kind of hair bits down a little bit, because hair also get, tends to get a little bit longer when you get neural flared. I'm going to bring that one down as well. Maybe bring it around this way instead of going that way, because that angle doesn't make a huge amount of sense now that I look at it. And I might just thicken up the lines around her a little bit to, um, yeah, just to separate that from the background a little bit. But yeah, building up some stuff here. So I wanted to get a bit of, bit of dream time energy in there. Oh yeah, while I'm sort of talking, not religiously, but, you know, about mythical, you know, historical, you know, things, uh, cultural stuff like that, I'd like to apologise, Georgie called me out on it, I didn't really notice I was doing it because I do it a lot without really thinking about it. In the last stream I did say a lot of kind of, I don't know, Christian-y, like, biblical things. I kind of do that as an accident, like, I just I just say that. I'm sorry if it offends anyone is, is why I'm bringing it up. So I'm sorry if anything I said was offensive. I just kind of will throw things like that in for, for no good reason. I'm not sure why I say things like, oh, you know, the Lord or stuff like that. But I'll try to curb that because I, I understand how that could be kind of not cool for some people. So yeah, I'll curb that. Because uh, myself, I did say also last time that uh, my philosophy, my personal philosophy is like whatever, I don't really have a hard stand on anything. If you were to like nail me down to a philosophy or a religion, I would say I am an optimistic nihilist, if that makes sense. I feel like ultimately nothing really means anything, nothing matters, but it doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself while you're here. So that is that. So yeah, I don't mind how that, how that looks. Got maybe a little more smoke in here, maybe thicken up a little bit like this. And yeah, we probably have some of this sort of stuff here. Thicken up some of these lines. Maybe even do a little bit of hatched shading on there. Although I don't wanna, don't wanna get too, bring in too many new concepts. Otherwise people will start expecting it and I'll run out of art things that I can do. So yeah, we'll probably leave Leave it something like this, although I will now in colour, just because that's kind of important. Check this out. He says. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it looks like. Okay. Need to change this to multiply, do I not? No, not that one. This one? Yeah. Okay. There we go. And I guess if I wanted to get real fancy about it, I'd do, do the glow, which I don't know. Again, that's a lot of stuff. Can I be bothered? Sure. It's screen and all. Yeah. All right. Um, oh well, let's finish Amethyst, actually. Yeah. Alright. Black and black. And just got this. Just got this. And yeah, I always forget that she doesn't have the teeth because she got them kind of surgically modified to be a bit more human-like. All right, bit of dust, bit of stuff, building stuff out of stuff because that's how we do it. Yeah, 
think that might be something like it. And yeah, I imagine this would be something that would be designed for, yeah, not warfare, but just, you know, maintaining, maintaining the earth, doing that sort of thing. And yeah, you pilot it sort of down here. I might just real quick, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this one, but let's add another layer and start adding in a little bit of what color. Now, it didn't come up much, but the Numbat color, and as I said before, everything is kind of coded in the in our shadow universe. So the Numbat color is yellow. You didn't really see it except when they were sort of in Brianna's hometown where a lot of the things were yellow. Her original outfit was yellow. Oh man, again, this is the first time I've used Ember Canvas on the big new fancy computer. So I'll have to try to find, I'll have to reset everything up. But yeah, let's put that down a little. Start kind of filling this in. Yeah, so and the, the light that is visible in the, the mechs that people use is fairly reflective of like the color that they associate with in terms of their culture. So if you have kangaroos, it's purple. For rats, it's red. For monkeys, it's green. That includes lemurs. For raccoons, it's red. For the squirrels, it's orange. And for humans, it's blue. So I also like that as a little kind of, not very subtle, but, but a thing. So you can kind of tell what's controlling what. If something is controlling something or it changes, changes hands or it's using a certain type of technology, the light will reflect that. So at the moment, yeah, whenever whenever they activate a pylon, a shroud pylon, it'll be green. If they're doing something with it that's more of a human style technology, it'll be blue. And if it's something they've made themselves, it'll be whatever color that is represented. And yeah, just like kind of the, the cave paintings and things like that, I imagine this probably wouldn't be a solid yellow light, it would probably have some sort of bits and pieces in there that represent kind of the internal workings of, of the machine or the animal that it's based on, because yeah, if you ever look at that sort of thing, they, they have a lot of that. It's almost like you're looking at, a, at an animal from the outside and the inside at the same time. So this is sort of building up over this arm here, this sort of, what's what they call soul age technology where it's sort of like a representation of yourself from another dimension kind of thing. It's drawing on the energy from another universe. That's why it, the, the energy is kind of limitless as long as there's a conduit. So that's why they've got to wear those uh, helmets all the time. It's limitless, but, but the, the headset itself can be overloaded. So in theory, you, it's, yeah, you can't ever run out of power, but the headsets can explode, which they do quite often. And usually an idea of how powerful or how good the technology is, how many of those little soul gems they have in them. So the rat ones have one, humans have three, kangaroos have one. Yeah, so, and uh, we haven't seen anything with two yet. But yeah, I reckon that's something. Yeah, okay, uh, they don't mind that. I might use something like this for something. Yeah building this stuff up. Yeah, so that's probably what's, what would happen if Brianna was Flared instead of Bray. Yeah, all right. Let's, okay, so it's been seven years since I've looked in chat, so let's see, I'm gonna have a guess of what might be in there. I don't know, more technical difficulties, tease the stream stop for 15 minutes. Something, something, something. I don't know, let's see what, let's see the disaster. Um, so yeah, I'll just scroll back up until where we were at. Ooh, cool. I was, I was really worried that uh, people wouldn't show up. It's like, oh no, people, people have seen the first two and that, they've had enough of me. But yeah, cool, people is, people is here. Um, so scroll back up, Omega. One of their questions is, so do the anthros ever eat meat? And are there any feral animals in the Generations universe? Let me make a note of that, because I'll, I think I'll remember that, but I never will. I'll just write meat, question mark. Surely that'll be enough. I will come back to it. Here's from SC Pilot. Here's my suggestion. Amethyst fangirling when she meets Mrs. Brisby from Secret of Nim. Interesting. Okay. 
Let's see. Amethyst Frisbee. Or Mrs. Frisbee, if you're a purist, I guess. Um, which I'm not. So, yeah. Well, I mean, Amethyst, I always considered to be sort of like a... The, you know, Brisbee, the next generation. Not in any real way, but just in, in the turn, in the way that she's a rat... Uh, Brisbee's not even a rat. A rat-like thing that has, like, uh, like a goal and then, you know, a lot of stuff to overcome in, in a world that's just basically outside our comprehension. It gets that way. Um, even though it's kind of the other way around, it's more like... Yeah, it's, I guess the rats are the ones, just like in Nim, that are the, the intelligent ones, but um, they, they get superseded. Um, yeah, so I'll get back to that as well. Da, da, da. What is everyone's diet in the generation universe? Good question as well. I'll put two question marks next to the word meat. That'll certainly let me remember what's going on. Uh, could the humans who ended up in cyberspace... Is it possible that they survived as digital entities? Digital entities? Yeah, well, Reboot is the unofficial sequel to In Our Shadow, so that answers that. Okay, I have this, but I'll, I'll get to a real answer at that point. Um, okay, Omega Cthulhu, okay, I have this one request here. My OC Anubis, Grey Jackal, Purple Suit, and Johan by the windowsill. Of that one. Oh yeah, I remember this from last time. Looking at the viewers. Now, I'm probably going to not do a lot of text. Just FYI in the future. Um, probably a rule of thumb. I guess if it takes more than one kind of message to put it in, it might be a bit much for me to kind of put on there. Also because, like, the way I write on here isn't really that conducive to being good. So I probably, like, limit the, the amount of text. But I can probably do, like, a sentence. So we'll see how we go with that. Uh, she's at home. Okay. Oh, that's fine though. Yeah, I could do that. I'm uh, wondering about the digital. Wondering about the digital thing. What digital thing? Okay, uh, not really a question, just wanted you to know I'm making a short fan comic before I make the big one featuring Johan, Sally, and Yuri C. Zap. Cool, sounds awesome. Keep me in the loop on that one. Uh, both important questions I need answered if that... Alright, it's fan Oh, the... Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'll answer that one first, I suppose. It won't take too long. I will get started on... Yeah, so I'll do I'll do the Anubis and Johan one, and then I'll do the um, the Amethyst and Brisbee one, just because I know that was a hangover from last stream. So I, I guess I'll yeah makes sense to do that one now. So let's get a new layer up here. Hold on a minute. Why is all these ones still visible? Oh, I know why. Because they come in as invisible. I'll have to set them up to come in or solid. Or, oh no, I usually turn all the other ones off. Yeah, that's what I do. Let's do that. Not that one. Uh, blue dot, you say? Hmm. Huh. That's fine. I'll just get rid of this. Alright. I'll have some work to do to make the uh, to make the uploadable version of these. I think I can't just turn off each layer and upload them like that. All right, so <clears throat> window cell. I can do that. There's no straight lines in a window cell. <laughs> Perfect. I refuse to use the the the, the, the line tool. I'll do the window cell afterwards. All right. So, uh, if I can recall, I think that a nervous had kind of like a bowl cut. I think. Um. Anyway, just just let me know as it as it goes. 
I think something like this. Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to fix the hairstyle up. But yeah, that's the problem with uh, <laughs> if it's if it's one I haven't drawn in a while, I may not remember how it goes, and to find the ref might take a little while since my uh, thing is pretty pretty whatever. I'll draw dry hand first, and I'll I'll, I'll do the hair later. Because I know that's wrong, it already looks wrong. But that's sort of a three quarter, it's more of a side view. But so with the suit that I can sort of do. And I'll have a kind of like a leaning on the on the windowsill pose. So digital entities. E short answer, unfortunately, probably not. The it depends on when you set. I guess the, the fan comic or story. At this point in the comic, 50,000 years in the future, the human, everything basically that the humans did has been destroyed. So it's still not really clear. I kind of left it open for maybe future stuff to be set a bit earlier as to what happened in between kind of the, the, the apes rising to power and the humans disappearing. Because that happened at some point. So the, the rats, when they kind of came into power, they essentially killed killed off all the apes and all the monkeys that were in the Twilight Shard pylons kind of existing forever in their virtual world. Because it turns out that's the inevitable path that if given enough technology and enough freedom, a sentient life form, in, by, by the sort of the logic of the evidence of this world, what will happen is they'll kind of create their own digital universe and live in that instead of the real one. Just because their mental faculties become so advanced that the real world can't really maintain enough stuff to keep them interested. So they want to keep sort of reinventing their world so they don't get bored and, and sort of stave off the thoughts of, you know, life being meaningless now that they've basically solved every problem in the universe and all that kind of stuff. So the, the apes end up in a digital world, as did the humans before them. But, yeah, so it's not really clear. Nothing survived that long. The only things of, of humanity that survived the 50,000 years were a few kind of basically USB drives made of gold and diamond that, that survived the whole time with some, some stuff on there, some, some movies, some important stuff that we left behind. And anything made of gold or stone or anything that will last that long has also survived. So a lot of statues, even though they're a lot older, the pyramids, Mount Rushmore, stuff like that are the only things that have kind of survived. So the, in theory of the human stuff can, could last forever. And a lot of like the black leaf suspended animation chambers, things were, were kept in there forever. So potentially if nothing went wrong, all the human stuff could be still going and the virtual world that the humans found themselves in would also still be there, but time makes fools of us all. And even though in a vacuum that probably would have been fine, the you know the apes coming along probably would have tampered with things and messed things up. Stuff might have broken down, unforeseen stuff, solar flares, or things from outside. Even even the humans' control at the time when they were locked away, the even the adverse or the humans who couldn't get neural flared and couldn't join up with the other humans in their virtual world might have just come back and destroyed everything, you know, who knows. So it's unlikely that the humans would, would be survived, would have survived anywhere up into the current time in their virtual world. The only way they could have done is, if you remember way back in the early pages of the first comic, uh, page 120, 140 or something, when they went to the moon, a lot of the human stuff there was in a relatively well-kept state just because there's no erosion there's no weather there's no anything like that on the moon there's only like micro asteroid impacts that sort of thing that can damage stuff and there was someone plugged into a virtual reality world on the moon just sort of a skeleton kind of locked in there they were dead so clearly the life support system had been shut down um probably the by emperor shawl by someone before that but if that sort of existed anywhere, even just the, the machinery that could later on be brought back with, I don't know, the virtual ghosts of people who used to live in there, that would be the only place that that could really happen. 
or anywhere else in the universe that it may have been um, colonized by people before that happened. Uh, so, Johan, let's get the and I. Industrial Revelation was during a time where the eyes were a lot more narrow. Sort of the pre pre Nuzlocke, where my my sort of designs were like were like irrevocably kind of messed up. Actually, maybe you have one of his faces. I reckon. I forgot to see exactly what they were talking about. Um, scroll down here. Da, da, da. Oh, I don't expect to see both of us in the same place in the same room, right? And this is just, as you can tell, we're in serious need of help. Let me ask you this much, you know, about the lot of us have Okay, so I feel like he'd have his, like, his eyes, like, hmm, maybe, like, looking shiftily around, like, hmm. You heard of, and he's doing, like, a kind of... Uh, don't know where we'll be lean. What is this here? Oh, it did change depending on the era. It's like, have you heard the word about the multi? Um, yeah, uh, no. And sort of messy. Don't know why my my pen's got a bit small again, so it's getting a bit sketchy. But that's all right. Something like that, and he's got his like. What's up, Andrew? The echo's back. The echo's back. What? Oh, you chumble wumble up in here. Gets knocked down. Gets set up again. Top thumb and echoes. Because it sounded like a bloody laughing. Yeah. So you can have the headset. Is it going to be unbearable with the echo though? It's pretty crap. Is it? Yeah. Well, maybe we should. I'm going to show all of them. Okay. I don't know how it just came back. What? Yeah, that's weird. We didn't, we didn't do, do anything. anything. I'm going to come back. Tokens are now if it's fixed. What are you trying? Um, I mean, this shouldn't have fixed it though. Is it back on? Oh, is it back on? Oh, guess I'd have turned it on. Uh, do I know how to turn it on? Do I? Um, yeah? It's already on, isn't it? Yes, I'm a Ah! Trying to trick me. but I can't restart it because then the stream will end. Do we start it again or would it be a separate? 
it will be a new stream. Hmm. Um, oh. What happened? Uh, oh. Is the audio better? Is it better? Yeah, Omega says the audio is all right. I know how annoying an echo is, so I don't want to... If it's tinny and an echo, it's pretty bad. Right, yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, so that's two votes, both by the same person, that isn't... <laughs> Kiss two cuts is two. Right, I'll go back and listen. Hopefully okay. it's good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, confusion, concern, bewilderment. It's just, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm really terrible at this at the best of times, so thank goodness G is here, otherwise I would have no hope at all. But yeah, I mean, you know you've made it, I guess. No, you can pretend you've made it if you're having audio issues. So that's that's good. I'll tell. I'll look for a positive grain of salt here. What the hell did I just say? Anyway, you heard me. I'm gonna take it back. I'm a teacher. Whatever I say is the truth. So like this, I will. I'll re, I'll, I'll bring. I'll bring Anubis sized up a little bit. Um. Oh God. All right. So we've got. Yeah, he's gonna be like. Coming in, almost, I'd say like off screen. Yeah. Maybe he's like leaning off something up here, just out of screen. He's got one of those hairs that sort of looks like it's got a hair tie on, but doesn't. Okay, so now we'll start to fix this up. And start with his insanely complicated outfit. Might make it a little more. So we've got a lot of this kind of business. Actually, the other day I found the hard copy of the the original story that he was in, The Witch Hunter Slayer, man, I put a lot of effort into that. I kind of looked at the line off for my recent stuff, I'm like, damn, what happened to me? I was so, so gung-ho to do crazy line art. But yeah, because he had this sort of thing, but it was also raised, so it, it sort of came off. And yeah, so every angle that it was from, it was like raised in a different way. I mean, the kind of, I guess the fundamentals weren't as good, but the, yeah, the detail, hmm, way more. I've become lazy, I guess. That's fine, I'm allowed. So he's got a big neck thing. He's got sort of his kind of jacket as well. Yeah, I'm definitely getting a smoothing tool for next time, or at least I say I will. And then next time when I forget, I will say it again. Yeah, I'm not going to see any of this. At least we can erase stuff here. It's like a wood carving, so there's going to be little scratches on there. Get this. Thicken this up a little bit. Yeah, put this one coming over like that, and this stuff. Sort of like this. Yes, hopefully the sound issues will be will be solved by the next one. I do have a proper big microphone that I'm going to set up at some point, but it's not all set up yet. We're still kind of sorting stuff out in the new room, getting all the programs on there. Yes, it's the first time I've used Open Canvas on this one. So one reason I didn't have a picture up there is because I was frantically trying to get it so it would work. And whoop, this stuff up here. And in. So yeah, I think the window is still actually good thing I didn't draw it tactically because we're gonna probably make it so that only Anubis is leaning against it and isn't easy as coming in off screen. And I think it was like a city or something outside, but whatever. Alright, so try to remember where everything is here. Nope. Yes. So yeah, another question. Um, oh, I think, oh yeah, meat. 
So yeah, sorry, sorry to put a downer on the previous questions about stuff coming back in robot bodies. As I said, though, you know, anything can happen. They had ultimate knowledge of everything. So maybe they did that years ago and they were off in space doing something. You never know. Transform scale. Make him a little. Nope. Uh, smaller. Just so we are kind of in the same ballpark size wise. It's probably good. Um, okay. Do anything? Yes. All right, so now I'll thicken up those lines a little bit. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna go with what I remember of the hair. And yeah, if, if I had the ref up, I would, I'm just drawing. I know he's got something like this. So this might be my Anubis as this, I don't recall. And then I think it just goes sort of straight down at the back. And we'll kind of thicken this up a little bit. And then I'll think about actually doing an expression, I suppose. Give it that selection. If I was someone who could actually connect lines up, I would do that. I would fill it in with black, but I don't. So I won't. Like this. I think I'm actually just going back, like my, my mission last time was to stop saying ah quite as much. First of all, I kind of noticed like watching YouTubers and stuff, they actually do it quite a bit. I just hadn't noticed it until I noticed it like on myself. And also I think ironically, this time I'm not really trying to stop myself doing it. And I think I'm doing it a bit less, possibly something to do with being a little comfortable. Or I am doing it and I'm not noticing because I'm not paying attention to it. But it's fine. I think, again, if you don't really pay attention to it. Hopefully it's not that annoying. But yeah, good thing I tactically made the audio screw up, so there's worse audio things to be paying attention to than how many times I'm saying, ah. Uh. So probably we've got a tail here, and we'll do that window cell. <laughs> so let's see, he's later leaning in this way. I'll get rid of all those angles, this stuff there. Now then, meet in the different universes. So yeah, it's always a tough one. We'll be in, in our shadow first. So to answer the like last part of the question first, because it will kind of help with the other stuff. Yes, there are non-intelligent animals. It's only the animals that had sort of thumbs or evolved really quickly that were able to sort of take take over the human niche by um, yeah doing what they're doing, using the tools they left behind, all that sort of stuff. The other animals couldn't really do it. So anything like dogs or cats or emus, just to name the most common three animals, none of those uh, evolved. And in fact, in the first comic, there was some emus, there were some wolves. I always sort of forget every time I look back on it, but Shaw actually did have some pet wolves that they got obliterated in one of the first big explosions when Bray took over all the rat technology when he was trying to shoot the moon. Yeah, so they, they're gone. But there's this wolves, there's... Lots of animals that the animals can eat if they are so inclined. But what the rats would eat, because there was like, I think there was 84 billion rats in the Northern Hemisphere. So more than they would probably have food for. So they just grew sort of 3D printed food in their own solar powered factories. And that was kind of what they did, which is why when the rat empire fell, they lost a lot of their people through starvation. Didn't really picture that, but that was one of the sad realities. That's why there's not that many rats left, or not, not any more so than there are any other creatures, because, yeah, can't feed that many people if all your food supply suddenly is gone. So yeah, then it's sort of in the last couple of pages of the first in our shadow, you could see a lot of the land that was originally building sort of were now used for farming and stuff like that. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a wake up call and maybe, I don't know, not like a moral lesson, I don't want to be preachy or anything, but we we're also living on kind of borrowed shit. So at some point we're probably gonna to have to face that as well. 
not in the same way and a bit slower and we'll be able to deal with it better, but yeah. I like putting little, little things like that, the kind of representative of stuff. Hot take there. So yeah, I think this is good. So I guess we'll put uh, some text in there. Uh, if I can remember, whoop, remember, scroll back up here. Uh, I think I'll just do the thing that Johan say. I think that makes sense. Do you know about the multiverse of madness? Okay. in this layout, I reckon. <laughs> kind of like how the writing's getting bigger. like I would do in my really old black and white hand-drawn comics, you can put speech bubbles behind stuff. So I will erase some of this. I probably got room for another, another speech bubble up here. And during the nubs, like I got really good at drawing speech bubbles round and good, but yeah, I guess that's not like riding a bicycle. I just do it, what I was for say. I think it was, as you can see, we're in serious need of help. Now, I might be able to just barely draw and talk at the same time, but I cannot write and draw. I mean, I cannot write and talk at the same time. So that's another reason why I prefer perhaps not so many text because, yeah, that's not incredibly capable for my non-multitasking brain to write words and also talk words at the same time, unless it's the thing I'm writing, which is probably unlikely. So there. And I think maybe like, maybe like a mouth, yeah. And we'll get rid of this. <laughs> no, get rid of this. Yeah, it's pretty sketchy, but that's fine. Because it's kind of, you know, shut it, the, uh, what do you call it? Industrial Revelations of this. We'll add a little bit of cross shading in here. That'll distract people from the lines. The last attack. Anyway, I was talking about the meat. Um, yeah, so animals that eat meat can eat the animals that didn't evolve. That's fair game. That's fine. And because of how that worked, the animals that did evolve don't really see the animals that didn't evolve as being intelligent or on the same level. Kind of like how humans don't really see a sheep or a cow as being on the same level. Even though, yeah, and if anything is sort of similar, like, like a rat or a different rat, those would probably both have evolved because when the rats evolved, they kind of enhanced or sped up the evolution of other animals that were evolving a bit slower. So anything that was sort of rat-like, like a mouse or anything really that the rats could use as kind of labor or any other purpose back when rats were kind of at a industrial or stone age or iron age level, they would have just had them evolve. So there's, no, there's nothing really that's like halfway, a halfway point or anything that didn't evolve that would be problematically similar to something that did evolve. So yeah, that's fine. So they'll do that. 
And yeah, a, a lot of the animals did evolve were not, they were at least omnivorous. Most of the predators don't have hands, really. The exception, well, bears aren't really predators, I guess. They sort of are, but they're whatever. So most things that evolve are omnivores or herbivores, especially in sort of Australia. Not that we have many carnivores left, sadly. But yeah, they do whatever. I guess like, quolls are quolls are carnivores, so I guess they would have had a bit of a hard time. But there was plenty of stuff around, a lot of grubs. They can akuna matata it. But yeah, in that universe, no, no shortage, lots of ways to get food, even after the 3D printing meat stuff. And I think there was a, an add-on to that bit, which was, what were they growing? <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. Uh, what, they, what would they be growing? Is it in terms of like the crops? The stuff that, they're, that they've got? Um, probably just you know, anything they would eat normally. The stuff that humans grew, carrots, things like that, but all sorts of other things. But I don't really draw, like, I don't really focus. It happens, but it's not really important. So I don't have people eating or sleeping a lot of the time. That's just assumed to happen off screen unless it's important. But I've, I've been rereading some old books that I read in, you know, middle school that, that I loved, like the old Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett? I like those books as well. Terry Brooks books, the Swords of Schnarr and stuff like that. And every five minutes they're eating or going to sleep. I'm like, is this really necessary? I kind of read it as a sleep aid myself, so it's kind of nice in that way, but it's like, seriously, every three pages is like, and they fell promptly to sleep. It's like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, what, this doesn't really add anything to the narrative, but that's okay. It's like, they ate a cold meal of cheese and bread and they didn't light a fire. It's like, yeah, I know, they did that the last 20 times. I assume they did it this time as well. So... Either as, a, as like a um, sort of trying to go against the grain on that front or whatever, but yeah, people never eat. Like the only time in In Our Shadow when anyone's eating, hold on, was <clears throat> when Bran was eating a thing of termites. And I think they were, they were eating some of the 3D printed food when they were going up into the, the, the pillar, when they were trying to see what was up in there. Amethyst, Brianna, and... The stealth rat, who I can't remember the name of, it's like something, some rock that was black obsidian or something like that, probably. So they had like a little loaf of brown something that was the 3D printed food that they that they would have. Okay, so I think that's this. Let's zoom out, see it a bit more better. Yeah, so there we are. Now this time I'm sort of remembering that I do have an incredibly high and low stuff to go to if I have to, so that's all good. All right, so we'll get another one on the go. I'll do the Mrs. Brisby one. I actually haven't ever drawn Mrs. Brisby before, which may shock people. But yeah, I um, and of course, you know, to do justice to a character I really like, I'm doing it in a way that I'm really bad at. So that's good. I'll have to do like a real picture later to make up for it. But this probably isn't going to be fantastic, but I will definitely need a reference for this because I know she's... Sort of looks like a fairly simple design, but isn't. Got that Don Bluth magic where it's very difficult to replicate. Speaking of Don Bluth, we watched Anastasia last night, and that is, that's something. That's like, sometimes it's less is more a lot of the time. You don't need to animate something so much that it looks kind of, kind of freaky and weird. I don't know what they did, but, you know, a lot of effort went into it, but almost to what, to, to uh, for what purpose? So we zoom in a little bit here, and we'll do that. So I guess I'll think about what, and while I'm doing that, I'll answer the meat in the other universe one. So, yeah, let's get a reference. Do, 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 do. And yeah, I won't be looking at that. I'll just have a look through the chat in a sec uh, right now, because I probably won't be doing that once I have a reference up. Uh, The new PC, you pay, play right off the stream, yep. Uh, I find it useful to do a few short test streams with a few friends with troubleshooting audio. That's what we're doing right now, buddies. It's pretty close, good. Oh yeah, the hair, I assume, good, good, good. Yep, there's his hair, wow, unbelievable. How many more drawings are you gonna do today? As many as I have time for in the next 50 minutes. Uh, got another request in mind if we've got time. Yeah, we'll see how we go. 
Uh, so back just as Calypso from Donkey Kong. Um, sure, that's actually probably more than what she usually wears, so yeah, it'll be a bit of a dressing for success. I want to see the knit one. Yeah, well, coming up. Here, let's do and dressed Lord Beerus from Dragon Ball. That's basically just what he looks like. Oh, except that Beerus is, I don't know, what's he wearing, a diaper or something? I don't know, blank cloth. Any expression? All right. Yeah, so let me just real quick get up a nim picture. Boop. Boop. Ah, uh, <laughs> don't know why, but the first one that came up was was one from the sequel, what, Timmy's Big Radical Adventure or whatever it was called? Some absolute trash of a movie. Unbelievable. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I feel like Brisby would be a little bit freaked out by it as well, so I guess I'll have to factor that in. Yeah, um, Timmy's bogus journey or whatever, like, oh my god, I remember seeing that. I don't think I've ever been more disappointed with the sequel of anything until I watched Beauty and the Beast 2, and then until I watched Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. So, yeah. All right, so I'll do Amethyst first because I'm too afraid to draw Brisby. Now, we're going to... Now, the height thing, that's going to be going to be a thing. Because is like about six inches tall or something, and um, this is about two feet, two and a half feet. Mm, I think we'll just, we'll just cheat it a little bit. <laughs> I guess I could do some sort of angle thing. All right. Not, not, take, not usually known to be showing a huge amount of emotion, Amethyst, but she would make an exception for this, I feel like. Now, I'm going to try to do some kind of um, maybe better lines, I think. Going with an ear out approach, always dangerous. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so food in the other, other universes. Yeah, they eat even less in those ones, in kind of, I guess, the stolen generation of this, or whatever I want to call it, to be a bit less problematic. But, oh uh, yeah, what the heck do they eat? I think there was there was sort of a, an ancient art jam that I did with some some friends a long long time ago, where we invented an animal called the the metus the metadon, which was basically like a, a little blob like a little cube of meat with feet and a face. I think it looked something. I think it looked something like this, and that was kind of just like the thing that like carnivores would eat in. <clears throat> In, in the anthro world and it, it's just like it's either too dumb to know what's going on it has like it's like it's, it's meat but it's like not sentient so it just like grows in his food and i think it was usually shown sort of over a sort of a spit or something like that and it would have this this gormless expression and that was kind of like our little cheat of, of what could be would be, would be used as, a, as food that was singe not hair that looked pretty dapper but yeah, so that was, the metadon was the thing that, that we invented for that. But in terms of what they really eat, good question. I feel like, I feel like this, I've never shown a real animal. Kind of like, it's sort of that, uh, what was it? The, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Robin Hood, the Disney's Robin Hood. In the open scene of that, there is a carriage being pulled by horses. And then there's also just, wait, is there? No, not that. It was in, no, it was in Redwall. In Redwall, in the first book, there was like a, a rat and on a carriage being drawn by just normal horses. So that would imply that normal animals exist and they would just eat normal animals. Yeah, no, in Robin Hood, they were just being pulled by rhinos. That's right. Which also makes it more difficult as to what they eat in that universe as well. I don't think it's ever brought up in that, but yeah. So I think the the thing that often they'll do in books where 
things are sentient when they probably shouldn't be is that there'll be some animals that aren't and generally it's fish that aren't they kind of get sort of they, they get the short end of the stick I guess because we sort of see them because they can't talk oh they must be dumb and they don't care whatever they're not really anything you know animals are farthing wood even though they would eat each other quite often they would also eat like little shrimps or whatever crayfish things that were in the water and those sort of were shown to not be sentient so i guess in the world there's also things that aren't sentient like certain animals that don't have the wherewithal to be considered something that would care about being eaten that much well they care but you know i don't know short answer i am not sure so i'll have a think about so let's see, I think, I think, no, that looks too apprehensive. I think she'd have this kind of thing going on. Yeah. Uh, she looks a bit crazy actually. Maybe that's not really what I want. Yeah, maybe like we'll go a sort of a bigger, bigger kind of one. Yeah, that's better. Now, if anyone's got any other sort of questions about stuff, I'll have a little quick back look in the chat and see if there's anything that anyone wants talked about other oh, but again like just like last time don't feel like there's any pressure to ask me anything but if there is i will answer it otherwise i'll just get to talking about something else do, do, do. so yeah let's head across the chat real quick because you moderators can support your channel go away um Yeah, let's give that a second. So I reckon pose-wise, she's gonna be like, have the old like, oh my god, sort of hands on the on the cheeks. Very amethyst heavy this time. <laughs> but yeah, while we're getting a new question, I think I'll just say about where I'll talk about where you know shadow actually came from or where the idea came from. And you might think it was secret in him, but it wasn't. That was just something that kind of, a few pages in, I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of like that. I think it was around about time when it was referenced in a comic was when I sort of saw the parallels or maybe someone mentioned it. Because I actually hadn't seen that movie until relatively recently. I had seen like a clip of it, like in the early days of the internet. I think someone had done like an AMV when that was a thing that people did of the, the fight between Martin or whoever, the, whoever the, the good rat was and the other one. Man, it's been a long time. I keep thinking, dang, I've got to watch that again. And then I'm like, I don't really feel like it. I don't really feel in the mood for a really kind of dingy, smoky, like gross um, Dom DeLuise flick today. But I have to watch it again because the more I think about it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's great. But then I'm like, I... Don't actually remember that much from it. I do really like it. I like its concepts, like all that stuff. But yeah, he's called something the Jenna. That's it. Um, he's called Jenna, the 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 the, the bad ratman. And yeah, no, Martin was the red wall guy again. We're getting them all getting them all mixed up. But anyway, I saw a clip of that in an AMV. I'm like, what the heck is this? This looks amazing. It's like right up my alley because even then I was drawing all sorts of animals with swords and things like that. So I was like, yeah, I got to get in on this. But it was like years later and I was like, oh, it was from this. And I watched it and it was amazing. So yeah, that's influenced a lot of the things that I do where there's like really high technology where stuff will just in any gap, there'll be just little lights, little glowy dots. It's like, what is it? What's it doing? Who knows? It's way beyond your ken and the kin of anyone who's around. It's just stuff that's happening. Don't worry about it. You can't fathom it. So yeah, I'll put little glowy lights in everything. Yeah, so that was that. So Inner Shadow started off actually, I guess you can trace its roots back to about grade six, sort of sixth grade, where I, me and my friend would draw stuff in our planners or our school diaries. And we had a thing where we'd sort of draw back and forth this fight between cows. He had the cows and I had chickens. This was before the cow and chicken show, by the way. 
And so the cows are sort of like tribal. So they were bipedal, but sort of just barely. They kind of look like the cows from the Far Side comics, if you've ever seen that, those. And they just sort of were big and round and they had feet and they had kind of spears and stuff. And so being like, you know, oh no, I've got armor that's invincible to your whatever gun that you've got. It's like, oh no, my gun's invincible against whatever, you know, the kid stuff. I made my guys be all really high tech. So they were chickens and they, but they were just like normal chickens, but they had like power suits and they had mechs. And the chicken mechs were, I'll just do it real quick over here. This is like an aside. They looked like oftentimes when you're drawing stuff from when you're a little kid, you sort of can't help but like modernize it a little bit. It's like, oh yes, I drew this as a kid. This is what they looked like. It's like, that wasn't what I looked like. You'd make it look way cooler because you're slightly better of an artist than you were when you were nine. But they just, they looked like this. So they were like a half egg and they had sort of feet, they had feet like this and sort of three toes. And they would sometimes have arms, but the arms would sort of could like fold in onto the sides. Sort of like an early sort of Strider concept. So they were like this, they had big fat, like dumpy feet, which also could fold up into the middle somehow. Like it wasn't really clear, but like in their flying mode, these feet would just be like completely tucked up in there and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to fit. And yeah, the arms would either be like that or they would be, so yeah, this is like the, 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 the progenitor of basically all of my stuff, like all my comics. So the, they would sort of come out like this and they would have arms like this. And now I also know where that came from. In, in Macross, another one of my big things I love as a kid, or Robotech, the, the Mark II monster is like one of the iconic mechs from that. It has like four huge cannons on the top and these big arms that look a little bit like this. Not exactly. This is like my child mind of like what they looked like. So they had like two guns in here like this and sort of hands in the middle like that. So yeah, the, the, like that. And the chicken power suits were just like, um, they had a chicken body. And again, they had like wings that were like a sort of a flat half egg shape on the side and they had legs that were similar to their legs their actual real legs were tucked up under here but they had big robot legs kind of like their mechs and again big sort of round circles here that also held, held, housed the wings that would fold up into some like arms and things that have little rocket packs on the back and stuff like that and these big kind of goggles so from that those humble beginnings, and then I sort of stopped doing that with that buddy, and then they moved away, we stopped being friends or whatever. And eventually, I used that stuff in my own story, which ended up being chickens versus dogs. So it was the chickens and the dogs, and there was sort of a, a law that evolved up around that, which was not dissimilar from how In Our Shadow is, where in the distant past, there was a machine, it was a bit 2001-ish, where there was something that was sort of built by, I don't know, aliens perhaps or something, or like a previous civilization that when you went in there, it would unlock stuff in your brain and make you more intelligent. And then there was a, that happened with chickens first. And they sort of, because of their cowardly nature, just like the rats, they enslaved everything else, including humans and all sorts of stuff. And then eventually a dog got in this machine as well, became intelligent too, and sort of helped the humans escape and the humans became intelligent too, and that was sort of the basis of the human-dog relationship, like the man's best friend. This is all completely ridiculous and stupid, which is why it evolved. So that was the original concept. The reason why humans and dogs get on so well together was because they had this ancient bond where they had to rise up against this oppressive race and overthrow them. So the dog machines looked like this, and at the time they were just called dog walkers, but eventually... They got the name of Striders. They were sort of like a big box. They had like turbines in here. They had arms. And if anyone has been around for a real long time, in the comic, there was sort of a bridge or a, pre a prequel to Stolen Generation called Divergent History. Kind of goes through the years between the end of World War II, which is where the timeline change from our normal human one into the anthro one and kind of what happened based on that it all kind of came down to like the dinosaur pod was discovered where in our universe it wasn't and that sort of in that inspired the evolution of machinery down like this gravitational path 
but yeah, that had this in it, which was the first dog uh, dog walker, which then became a strider. And again, it could have its feet folded up into the bottom here. And yeah, then and also these wings would fold down and become the wings, and these would fold up underneath and become like weapon pods underneath. And then that evolved from this into the current strata. <clears throat> but enough little scribbles of that, I'll get back to the actual picture. But yeah, so the dogs versus chickens thing evolved again, and the chickens kind of got not dropped, but sort of just molded into the background a little bit. And the story suddenly became set in the future where it's been, well, the present day, I guess. And there was this big, this is a story I wrote when I was in grade, grade eight, I started writing it, where it, there was this sort of dome, this time dome that kind of kept everything as it was from like thousands and thousands of years ago. And slowly in the outside world, the dogs and humans were losing the intelligence they got from this machine. Each generation, they got less and less intelligent. But inside the time dome, they kind of kept it. But dog, because the only things that were allowed to come through are dogs and foxes and things and wolves. They, as they came in, because they, they could come in, but nothing else could, they could see from, as they were getting less and less intelligent, because time was passing really slowly inside, but on the outside, it was much, much faster. So we're seeing things were happening like that. And then eventually the time dome started to break down. And then that sort of restarted this big war where they needed to find this ancient technology again. Because when they, the dogs that were living inside it came out, I realized that everything was completely ruined and most of the animals that were intelligent no longer were. Humans had kind of destroyed everything. And they were told about this by, by, a, chick, by a bird. It was a chicken, but later on it just became some other bird that wasn't quite as dumb told them about this and said, look, you've got to overthrow the humans. You've got to get, get your technology back. The dogs by this time had sort of forgotten everything, even inside the dome as to what happened and their, their allegiance to the humans and all that kind of stuff. So they do that. There's a big war between humans and dogs and they regain technology. And then it, it becomes apparent that the humans orchestrated this to destroy both races so they could then come in and finish everything up. And then at the end of that arc, the humans and dogs sort of rally and sort of join forces to kind of take take that over. So that idea of sort of animals becoming intelligent through other means, and I've, I've tried to restart this, this as a comic a bunch of times, but it never kind of really got off the off the ground. Like I got a few pages in, but then I kind of ended up all liking it. But I took those sort of ideas of animals becoming smart and technology from a different time and sort of reversed it so that the humans were the ones that got lost. And originally it was going to be like a fairly short kind of comic where it's just like a story of some people rediscovering ancient human stuff and then, you know, taking over the rat, getting back at the rat oppressors. But yeah, it sort of evolved a bit from there and became a bit bigger. Yeah, I think as I said in the last stream, originally it was just going to be Amethyst being the, the main villain and they sort of eventually kind of fight back. She does sort of have a, had a redemption arc a little bit and whatever, but yeah, that evolved a little bit into what it is now, which, which is okay, these things happen. Oh God. So this, <laughs> I am going to absolutely ruin this. I know it now. So let's see. I can kind of draw my own stuff on autopilot, but I'm not sure how good I'm going to be able to be doing this, uh, trying to concentrate on like getting this right, because my goodness, this is a complicated design and it's one of those ones where it's going to look absolutely nightmarish until it's finished, I think, because yeah, there's just so many, there's so many parts of this that kind of don't make any sense until it sort of gets lighted up. And being a, an artist on this would have been something else. It doesn't really come that far forward. It's kind of back here. Also, this picture I'm going from is kind of a weird tween frame. I'm not sure if this is uh, probably the best one to be doing it from, but that's okay. If I do this real bad, I might come back and uh, redo a different version of it that actually looks not terrible. 
Oof. Perhaps if I'd ever drawn Mrs. Brisby before, this would have been a little easier. I don't know if you've seen Drawfee at all, but that's a channel I really like. And this is kind of like, I feel like this is a little bit like kind of when Julia tries to draw a Pokemon from memory or just, just drawing something without sort of really a, a knowledge of the way certain things are drawn. And yeah, this is going to be something else, I feel like. Hopefully it looks at least looks stupid enough to be memorable, but it's probably going to be some stupid middle ground that isn't really anything. Let's see. And the design is great, but it's so different to how I do things. Should you even be able to see both of these eyes at once? I guess. Hmm. Okay, it sort of continues up like that. Real sort of shrew like. Yes. This is. This one. Kind of. I'm gonna like move move this around at some point and and kind of fix it up a little bit in a minute. But um. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. I feel like I'm drawing with the left hand, but I'm not. Let's see, she's got like. I feel like. Yeah, nah. That's an expression. Maybe like. It's something. I feel like this sort of thing a lot of the time. She should be kind of like generically. Perhaps not really. She's sort of. Those eyes are not pointing in any sort of direction, are they? Maybe they're gonna look okay when they shade it in a little bit. That's a little better. But yeah, she kind of like just takes whatever as it comes. So I suppose like even this sort of thing would be not like completely outside her wheelhouse of stuff she's had to deal with. And the ears are so... Okay, so there's a line in here. Oh, God me, goodness. Come around here. Yeah, okay. This is <laughs> a nightmare. We're gonna fix this. Fix this in post. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger in the chin, might fix it up. I think it'll be okay when the ears and stuff on the side of the head comes in. Uh, travesty. So, yeah. And... And then kind of goes in like that. Yeah, I think I remember saying last time how I kind of learned to draw a lot of anthro stuff from a couple of screenshots on the back of a Bolto DVD. No, VHS tape. This is not dissimilar from that, in that it looks horrendous. <clears throat> and kind of, kind of small ears. Where's, and the other ears, like, over here. That seems too far back. Although I guess I draw ears a bit too far forwards. Who might argue with one of the masters? Does have a little bit of chin fluff on there and yeah that, that, that eye angle I think will make sense once I change the scale a little bit it's just going to be a lot shorter and I don't know from a distance perfect oh god <laughs> oh Jesus Okay, so we've got a neck, we've got a this, okay good. There's no such thing as an uncanny valley when you're doing a neck robe shawl thing. Do, 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 do. And we'll have that default kind of, kind of, he <laughs> he. This steepled fingers kind of rockers of life look. No. And like 
that. Yeah, I feel like she'd be a bit sort of apprehensive, but also this is only the third weirdest of the shit she's seen today kind of look. Alright, yeah, um, yeah, I feel like I'm gonna go like this, and then this, and then, yeah, anyway, where was I? Uh, yes, talking about, talking about the, where everything came from. So, <clears throat> yeah, from that. Yeah, sort of reverse things. Originally it was a much shorter story. But yeah, I might still do that other one these days. I feel like if I ever wanted to like do something that would be more widely applicable to people in general, not just a incredibly small niche of people. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, what I mean by that is I do everything because I want to do it. Like I, if I'm doing a comic, I want to do everything on my own. I want to do <clears throat> the sort of thing that I want to see. But what I want to see is incredibly specific and there's not super many people, except for you awesome people, who would want to kind of see that. But if I did like the original story or like a, more, a variation on it where it's more like, because in, in the first story they weren't anthro, they were just animals, but they would wear suits that would let them stand like that. And if you've seen some of the earlier crossovers, because those sort of bled like straight over from the original that one, and some of the characters are the same, like Raid, Redentor was from that original dog comic, so he was originally just a normal dog, then I forgot the first half of that sentence, so that's fine. We'll move that back in a little bit, because that's a bit too big, yeah that's better. I guess I could use the eraser instead of changing it to white every time I want to erase something. But why would I make things easy when it's been so fun, everything's so difficult? So there we go. And yeah, I might as well finish the job. Man, just got a really wide stance. It's fine. All right, so now I think we'll make this make sense. So let's thicken up some of these lines a little bit. Because when we shrink this down, it's going to look really strange. Just like if you're watching an old, they don't do it so much these days, but an old cartoon where you look at a, something on the screen and it looks suspiciously fuzzy and you're like, I bet that's about to zoom out because the lines will suddenly get back to how the normal lines have usually looked. Kind of like that, but the reverse. So that's that. Yeah, I think I first noticed that in Ninja Turtles when I was watching it. It's also the same show, at least when I was about six. It's also the same show when I noticed that <coughs> hmm, that part of the hedge is a different colour. I wonder if they're going to drive through it. So, yep, yeah, and then let's get this and then we'll decide about this composition. Uh, do I want to fix that eye first? Yes. Zoom in a little bit. Actually, that's not the worst thing I've drawn, which isn't saying much since I've drawn some absolutely horrendous things. So make this a little smaller. Yeah, I think we'll bring this sort of up a little. And bring this kind of around like this. So, oh, that might be worse. Uh, maybe, no, I know what to do. If in doubt, Make it cross-eyed. No, wait. I don't know. Oh, it feels like that's what I would normally do, but I don't know if it's going to work. Oh! Uh, 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 I don't know. I think it's, I think it's worse. God, I'm struggling a lot with this. <laughs> so, so I thought I might be doing more than one picture today, or two, or three. All right, that's, that's, all right. 
Cut. Run with it. Let's see, I did this problem now. <clears throat> yeah, definitely fixing that one later, but don't want to spend too much time on this. So yeah, let's get that smaller. Do, 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 do. Transform, please. Yeah. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Nope. Yeah. What are we done? Why not this as well? Oh yes, here we go. I was in the wrong one. Yeah, let's have two different transforms. One works, one doesn't. That sounds cool. So yeah, I reckon that's probably about Uh, but now I'm just looking in the wrong direction. Whatever, I don't want to, let's not futz about this too much. Okay, um, that's probably good, and then, yeah, we'll just zoom in. And then, yeah, let's just, okay, it'll be easier to change Amethyst size because I can just draw them the way I want. Yeah, doing the eye shine on the left. Hmm, not my eye shine. That wasn't the way I was brought up. In this house, why we do eye shines on the right? Yeah. Oh, I'm just conscious that I've only got about. 18 minutes. That's fine. I can do a drawing in there as long as it isn't of um, a Don Bluth character. Turns out. All right. Now I just finish up. It looks like she put a line style with her as well when she came into this universe. So let's finish up this body. It's just enough room to do a kneel. Oh, a bit laggy. What did that happen? Whoop. One of those kneels I was complaining about before that are difficult to do with backwards legs. But that's okay, I'll cheat it. I'll just say it doesn't. It's got a really long body. Let's just fix that. And I don't know why I'm being so, so, so fussy with this one. It's not like it even matters. As soon as I look back to the left, I should realize it doesn't even matter. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, that. Yeah, some weird ass, I mean, some weird, but lagging is happening here. That eraser, I don't know if you saw that, the eraser went all really, really odd. It's the setup, I'm sure it'll be fine the next time. Settles in. The Amethyst does have a pretty long body, actually. I was looking again back at some older pages to make sure I was being consistent. And yeah, um, they started off a little stubby. They got, <coughs> no, they started off quite long and got stubbier as they went. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink of water. Uh, I'm like, why did that happen? I'll blame Pokemon. But yeah, I do like the sort of the longer, longer bodied look is all right. And then kind of, whoop, up here, up here, just make sure, pardon me, that I didn't fix, uh, do anything, tail, uh, yeah, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a little better. No. <laughs> anyway, I'm done. Amethyst fan going out about me sending me to Mrs. Brisby. And I think yeah, uh, maybe we'll just have them not in the middle of nowhere. 
don't know how this would happen, but somehow. Rats of an M cryopod. Although, nah, she'd be, she'd be her version from Timmy and the Giant Peach or Timmy Cruise Control, whatever her older form looked like with little glasses. All right, so I'll head back to chat. One of my legacy characters as a Pokemon? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm reminded of the Mighty Ducks cartoon in reference to what? I haven't seen that, so. Although I knew someone who was like obsessed with it. I should have picked up more by osmosis. One of those movies I forget everything for and have to rewatch every several years, yeah. Um, cool. I'll do the Pokemon one just because it'll be nice and quick. I feel like uh, the Calypso one, I'll, I'll do that one next time. I, do, I did watch a couple of episodes of the old Donkey Kong cartoon, if that's the one. <clears> the <throat> one that's like CG, <clears throat> kind of like Beast Wars plus one in terms of quality of animation. All right, if someone could give me a Pokemon and someone could give me a legacy character, I'll combo them together. Yeah, okay. Since I feel like I haven't done too many, while I'm waiting for that, I'll just... I'll just do some little something. Uh, I'll draw. I'll draw Kit Fox, Bishino style. I got these in, in massive sunglasses from a surf shop there. I love them. They're like purple mirror shades and they're huge and they go with my normal glasses. Oh, they're right here actually. And they're like the best thing ever, so I'm wearing all the time. Yep, G bought them for me. I was like umming and ahhing. I was like, ah, oh, 60 bucks, I don't know. And then, yeah, the only way I tend to get things is if I um and ah about it and go back and forth a hundred million. Oh, that's a real 2003 Kid Fox. Oh, that, that, that tracks, that's like his sort of beach look. Yeah, that's, that's how an anthro sunglasses would go. And... Phew, what a palette cleanser. <laughs> I was going insane during that brisbee. I should get a bit more practice before that sort of thing comes up again. And it never will. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is kind of how he looked in about 2003. There's a really old picture I've got on DA called Chlorinated, where he basically looks like this. But that was after being in the pool, and his hair went all pink. And then I kind of liked that, so it stayed that way. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, the screen's dimming. But no, it's because my polarized glasses, and I turned my head slightly. For anyone who hasn't tried that, wear your polarized glasses and do this. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. <clears throat> yeah, and of course. All right. Uh, oh, the the boss, <laughs> Raichu, and the boss leader with glasses, who is called General Jet Flash. No problem. No problem at all. <clears throat> all right. So, Raichu, is it? Yeah, I've got 10 minutes. That's a perfect amount of time to draw a Raichu. I've drawn them for the Nuzlocke, but I... I don't know. Some of their key features. It's one of those ones that I think, yeah, I've got this from memory. And then I'll draw it from memory. And it's like, something's missing. And then they'll be like, you idiot. They have this, obviously, the most defining feature. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. So, okay, actually, that's not a huge stretch. Lima and a Raichu, not dissimilar. So, I'm going to start with a Raichu base and then kind of take it from there. Yeah, good suggestion. 
Tali. What? 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 Ooh. Gonna go with some. It's yeah. Sort of funny. Raichu hasn't really changed their shape that much. I guess because he hasn't been in the in the public eye too often. But I mean, Pikachu has slimmed down quite a lot. Sort of the Garfield Garfield effect. The Raichu is still still pretty rotund. It's pretty plump. So yeah, we're gonna get a cigar because I I don't know. I think I might have. I might have not Mandela affected myself, gaslit myself into thinking that she had a cigar all the time, but I'm not sure if that's the case. But it is the case now and always has been from now on. So we've got, speaking of big glasses, aviators. Oh, they kind of, no, they're separate, I think. They're like two lenses. I do have a little, I never put it up on DA, but I do have a little. 3D printed model that I made of her, so I should get that and use that as a reference. That's no time. No time, man. All this. There's a little bit of time. One moment. Eh. Can't open the cupboard. Never mind. I'll put through pictures of that later. All right, so we've got, I pretty much know what's going on. Ooh, no, no. As long as we have the color. So probably got some hair kind of like this. Uh, what happened? Where is it? Oh, it's in that cupboard, but I can't open it because this, the box for the airbrush is stuck against that door. <clears throat> Just careful of Brianna leaning up against it. Did it fall over? Yeah, but I caught it. Thanks. Uh, where? Oh, the other side. Yeah, the other side. Oh, you could have said that. Oh, no. That, yeah, that's why I couldn't open that door. Now, power seat? Not power seat. A power seat is in how the 80s did it. Or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. See if I can get that on the camera real quick. It'll only take a second, I think. Although I will have to wait for the lag to kind of catch up, I guess. Let's see if we can focus on it. Uh, okay, wait about 10 seconds for me to actually see what I'm doing here. Let's see if we get a little closer. Uh, and I'll know in about 30 seconds how that worked. But, yeah. I think the lag's even more than it was last time. Anyway, oh yeah, it wasn't far off, but she does have more, <clears throat> six minutes. She does have more, more hair than that. It like, does the old this. Matt, default matte style hair number one. Oh, maybe it's in kind of a few more separate bits. And yeah, these sort of, yeah, short hair, sideburn bits kind of, oops, coming forwards. Get rid of this. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. And looks a little weird. Fix that up. Whoop, a little bit of a bend in there. And we have... Uh, something. So, let's get this right here. Okay, they've kind of got right, right down like that. Probably a bigger body than this, actually. Whoop. 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 I 
assume the other leg does this. I'm not going to do the weird pose that it's in in the reference picture I am doing. That is too short. Anyway, it's not that important. So, tail. Now just jump back into chat for a second and see if there's anything to answer. Speaking of the lemurs, the way Final Fantasy XIV goblins speak remind me of them, they refer to lots of talking as much tongue flaps. Okay, yeah, I haven't played that. I haven't really played any of the Final Fantasies except for three and four. And back in the day, I watched my brother play 10 and I had friends who loved 7, as everyone either did or their friends did. But I never played it because I never thought it would live up to the hype that they were talking about. And they remade it kind of, I think. Or they remade it properly since they kind of remade it. I don't... I don't know. But, yeah. Final Fantasy is cool. I remember being burned by the spirits within back in 2000 or 2001, whenever that came out. That's at a CG film that was clearly nothing to do with Final Fantasy, but they added the name onto it at the end to boost sales or, or something. So that was, that was, I guess, a bit of a disappointment. Not a bad film on its own right, but definitely not really a Final Fantasy film. We don't know what's going on. Better than sort of contemporaries like at the time, like Titan AE or whatever, that were doing a similar thing. Yeah, I think I might do it, at least the jacket, or like a little approximation of that. Because she's got the, I do love myself a little kind of high collar. Yet another thing that I do enjoy from Macross or Robotech. Belt. Oh. If you say so. I like to have a belt. Yeah, I love a little military uniform with a high collar until I have to draw it 5,000 times. No, it's still fine. There's worse things to draw. That's why I draw mechs, because everything else seems easy by comparison. Some little pauldrons. And we've got about two minutes. So I'll finish this up real quick. We've got the 500 little badge medals. 50,000 is in the future. That's still exactly the same. We've got little, little, little bits here, and we'll just get rid of this line. I think that's not too as bad as the the other bad thing I did. All right. Well, I think we'll. I'll just head back into chat real quick, but we'll probably call it there. So thank you everybody for joining me on this previously third, but the artist formerly known as the first third attempt at the first attempt at this, but we put it back to the first attempt because of all the problems. It can only go better from here. Sorry about all the technical details, difficulties rather. Sorry about my inability to draw a Brisbee and Sorry about the sound echo specifically. Sorry about stuff. Hopefully by next time we'll have that fixed. But yeah, as we said, there's been some stuff going on with the new computer setting up and all that kind of stuff. So that's some. Um, oh, hold on. Can't end the stream without the shines. Yeah, there's something missing. How are you supposed to know she's in the military if you can see her eyes? There we go. By the way, also, while I'm apologizing, 90% of the stuff I say I don't really mean, so don't think like, well, I'm in the military, so don't do that, I'm just, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm just saying stupid stuff all the time, don't worry about it. I don't mean anything I say, except for the stuff I mean. So yes, thank you very much for joining me, and yeah, it's been great, I always enjoy having you people along, it just means the world to me, I'm sure you're sick of people saying that, but I wish there was other words I could use in English that would say the same thing as that. But yeah, it's fantastic. I noticed a couple more patrons have joined up. So that's absolutely incredible. Every time I see that, I'm like, yes. And I might as well mention, 
in six months time, I might have said this already, but in six months time, I'm going to be quitting teaching. Then I've got half a year of long service leave in which I'm going to try to see if I can get by on just art. So my goal is, try to, is going to be to try to get, uh, I think I need to get something like 700 or 800 a month on Patreon to kind of make that happen. That'll end up being kind of, you know, 150 $200 a week or something, and then I can survive on that. So if I can manage to do that by the end of next year, and that's kind of like, you know, if I put it into the sort of breakdown that people always do when they're talking about this, that's like 3% of the watch is given a dollar or something. If that can happen, then we'll see if it does. Then I'll be able to do comics and this stuff like at least double the amount that I'm currently doing. So that's my little goal. Thought I'd mention it here at the end here. And for anyone who just happens to see this later. Well, people, yeah, so more to the point. Thank you so much for already supporting me. You guys are awesome. Thanks for joining me in the stream, taking time out of your day, two hours out of your evening. It is absolutely phenomenal that people will do that for me. So that's absolutely great. Hope you had fun chatting uh, to each other a little bit in the thing. Hopefully we get stuff sorted out. And let me just get back down in here. You're a military brat, Mordak. Uh, that's great. Good stuff. Um, maybe I'll write a bit of that fanfic sometime, not too lazy like usual. By the way, I'm reading all these in reverse order, so imagine it makes sense. But yes, da -da -da, lots of references, nods for other Final Fantasy games, good main story. Cool, yeah, I'll probably check it out. My problem is I've got no time. I was looking at Final, F Final Fantasy Fire Emblem in Gage today and yesterday, so this looks awesome. A chance to use Roy again, because he was my main in Smash Brothers Melee back in the day. Um, but I'm like, I haven't got time. If I want to do this many comic pages and stuff, there's just no chance. So Final Fantasy XIV would be great, but I'll look up someone's video of it or something. But anyway, uh, thanks so much for being here again, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye, everybody.